Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. The Book of Daniel, Chapter 3 Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshippeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations and the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth 
is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and hath changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree, that every people, nation, and language, which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The hymn writer declares, safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek, waiting in his courts today. Can you imagine it? We have come to the end of another work week. And as we approach the hours of the Sabbath day, may the blessing of God settle in our hearts and in our homes. Our message today comes from the book of Daniel again, and this time I'm reading Daniel chapter 2, verse 17. The Bible says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Let us pray, Father, please speak to us yet again from your word. For Christ's sake, amen. There is a very important word in the text that we just read, Daniel chapter 2 and verse 17. That word is companion, companion. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word companion is a familiar word for one who joins or accompanies one on a journey. Whether that journey is a literal walk on the road, then we will say a traveling companion, or whether that journey is a journey through life, one would then say, my marriage companion, my companion through life. The word companion comes from panis, the Latin word for bread, and originally the word was used to describe someone with whom you share a meal. Daniel's friends are called his companions, his companions in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 17. Now, these youth were true companions. They are seen together in Daniel chapters 1, 2, and 3. We see them facing trials and troubles together, praying together, and standing up for Jesus and the right together. They were true companions. Their companionship reminds us of the words of Psalm 119, 63, where David says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. This is a good rule to follow when choosing close companions. Now, the Apostle Paul also had companions in labor and companions in travel. Acts chapter 19 and verse 29 says, And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel. 
So Paul had traveling companions. Then Philippians chapter 2 verse 25 says, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor. So it is good to have companions. Solomon, under inspiration, presents some counsel and observations concerning companions. He says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Then he says in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 7, Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. He says again in Proverbs 28, 24, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. At times the word companion seems to be deeper than just a traveling body. Sometimes the word companion seems to be deeper than just a traveling body. The Bible in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14 describes the wife as a companion. The Bible in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14 presents the wife as a companion. Malachi 2.14 says, Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion, she is thy companion, and the wife of thy covenant. Malachi the prophet was telling the unfaithful husbands, you yourself chose her to be thy companion through life, and you entered into covenant or contract with her to live with her in true love and affection. Yes, friend of mine, as it were, when we take our marriage vow, we pledge to be a special companion to our marriage partner, to walk with him or her on the journey through life from this day forward, as the marriage vow says. I posit, friend of mine, that a good friend will be a good companion. A good friend will be a good companion. Speaking of himself, the Apostle John says, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9, he says, I, John, who also am your brother, and a companion in tribulation. Companion in tribulation. Friend of mine, could it be that as Christians we can say we are companions because like travel companions, we are all traveling from earth to heavenly Canaan? Could it be that as Christians, we can call ourselves not only friends and brothers in Christ, but companions because we are traveling together from earth to heavenly Canaan. It is natural to seek companionship, friend of mine. Everyone will find companions or make companions. And just in proportion to the strength of the friendship will be the amount of influence which friends exert over one another for good or for evil. Friend of mine, we can have heavenly companions as well. We can have heavenly companions as well. As Christians, we have the companionship of the divine presence. And as we realize this presence, our thoughts are brought into captivity to Jesus Christ. Our spiritual exercises are in accordance with the brightness of our sense of this companionship. You remember, Enoch walked with God in this way. And friend of mine, I will impress upon your mind that you may have a divine companion with you, if you will, always. And that divine companion is Jesus Christ. The following beautiful hymn tells us of the companionship 
that we may have in Jesus Christ. The following beautiful hymn tells us of the companionship that we can have in Jesus Christ. The lyrics of the hymn declare, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When the shades of life are falling, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my sorrows, Lord, walk with me. In my sorrows, Lord, walk with me. When my heart within is aching, I want Jesus to walk with me. Friend of mine, if you have not done so yet, if you have not done so yet, I urge you to take Jesus as your companion through life. Accept him as your Lord and Savior, and he will be indeed a companion who will be with you through all the changing scenes of life, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in adversity and prosperity, in sickness and in health. And when you are on your dying bed, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Friend of mine, let us cherish our earthly companions, true companions, and let us cherish more so Jesus Christ, our heavenly companion. Let us pray. Father, thank you for speaking with us today, reminding us that you want to be our companion throughout life. Thank you for those who have chosen you as a companion. Remember also those who have made prayer requests. May they seek not only answers to their prayers, but to seek you and ask you to be their companion through life. Thank you for a wonderful day and a refreshing night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.